Being comfortable sitting on the floor is a challenge for a lot of people. We sit so much in chairs in modern culture and on furniture, and it, it's just not part of our daily practice to get all the way on the ground and be comfortable there. So as with anything, we lose the ability to, to do it easily. So today I'm going to show you uh, a process that can be integrated into your life that can help you develop the agility and the understanding of how to get yourself down on the floor, back up off the floor, and then a way to sit that is more or less comfortable while you're entering this process of, of increasing agility so that you have multiple ways of sitting on the floor comfortably. So take a look at the skeleton here. I've got the skeleton pulled up close so that you can see this. This is your hip joint. This is where your thigh bone, which is this, enters into your pelvic structure, your hips. Okay, Just uh, orienting you, this is your spine, which wedges down into your hips. And, your, and then basically all the weight of your upper body is wedging down into this structure, which then disperses that weight down into each of your legs. So this pivot point here, this joint, which is really massive, is a very important place in the body to have control of movement, to have all the movement that's available, right? It's a ball and socket joint, which means your leg can pretty much go all over the place. That's why you have contortionists who can put their legs on top of their head and stuff. So when we're sitting in a chair, we're bringing the thigh bone into this relationship, a perpendicular relationship, ideally, to the pelvis. Most people, when they sit in a chair, however, when they bring their leg to this relationship, it tilts the pelvis back because we're stiff and chairs invite us to lean back in them. And so if you've seen my Better Sitting video, I talk about how to get your pelvis more on top of itself or stacked vertically so that you can have the ability to have this perpendicular relationship with, without throwing everything above the pelvis out of kilter, out of alignment. So sitting on the floor, though, is kind of more like that, right? We have, to, we, have to event, we have to find our way to this ability here to have the pelvis upright and the spine elongated and upright as well while articulating our hip joint even farther in the socket, okay? So I'm going to show you a process to use that will set you on your way to having that having that agility. And the key is that you really stay in the process and don't get too goal-oriented towards getting all the way down on the floor. So go ahead and stand up. Come with me to standing. And stand with your feet kind of wide apart, OK? Not too dramatically wide, but just wider than the outsides of your hips. And begin to shift your weight. You're moving your pelvis side to side. And you're letting your, your trunk kind of turn a little bit. You're getting used to sort of panning your environment here a little bit side to side. Now, what this is doing is it's starting to wake up your hip joints, right? So we're standing. There's not a lot of flexibility needed. But we're actually turning the pelvic structure relative to those leg bones. So we're, we're actually starting to articulate each hip joint, okay? Now, I'm going to progress this to pivoting farther into my turn as I shift my weight so that my back heel can come off. So just feel that. Feel how you get more of a turn out of it. Your body can go almost to a 90 degree relationship to where you started. Okay? And what this is going to allow is that we can begin to go toward kneeling. But let's do it very gradually. So notice how I'm bringing the arm that gets brought into the middle of my two legs down toward the floor. And I'm starting to back up my hips behind me and bend both knees. And I'm not trying to touch the floor. I've maybe already done several repetitions, and I'm not anywhere near the floor yet. I'm getting closer and closer each time. And that may be enough for you for your first practice. If you start getting pain in your knees, or your breath is uh, you know, catching and you don't quite have the coordination or the strength in your legs and through your trunk to support being this low, then that's what you should practice. You shouldn't really insist on doing much more this time. 
but I'll show you what comes next. So as we get low enough to put our hand on the floor, we'll need to make more space between our legs. So notice how my foot is sliding back to be able to bring my knee down to the floor. Notice I'm not arching my back and I'm not hunched over as I go down. I'm doing the same movement I did in a previous video about sitting down into a chair. I'm moving my hips back behind my heels before I bend my knees. I'm keeping my trunk consistent. That's what I'm doing here. I just have my legs in a different position. So once I can get to the floor with my hand, I want to simply bring the other hand and the other knee down to a hands and knees position. Okay, this is where people often uh, don't know what to do and they just put themselves in a cross-legged seated position, but that's really hard to do if you don't have a lot of agility yet. What I suggest is that you slide one of your knees towards its opposite hand. That's going to turn your body and bring you to the floor. And in this position, which we call side sitting, where both legs are off to one side, you're actually able to lean on one hand. So you're not asking your body to be completely upright in this position yet, because you're not there yet, right? But this gives you a leg up. This helps you to find the agility and just to use that whole process of getting down and getting up, which is going to open up, change relationships of the parts of your body to each other. Okay, if this position is hard, bring a, a, some sort of a support and put it under the hip that you're sitting on. This hip is off the floor for me. And you might want to bring your hand that you're leaning on onto this, this support as well. So this just raised the floor so that this hip is, is not having to be so close to the side of your body, okay? Just decreases the mobility that's required slightly. Okay, if you're comfortable here, if you like this position, play a little bit while you're on the ground with changing sides. Now, this feeling how you're able to go back and forth. There are a lot of different ways of, of changing sides, yeah? But basically, this is a position to start with, to be comfortable on the floor, okay? You can also spread your legs out in this position. That feels different. So to come back to standing, put both hands on the floor and come back to hands and knees by sucking this leg, your, your, the leg that has most of the weight on it, into your gut. Just pull it into your belly, so to speak. And then you're back on your hands and knees. And then you'll need to get your kneeling position. So either leg will do. Put the one up that's freest, and you'll probably have to come off of one of your hands to do that. So I like to put my free hand on that leg. Then I tuck my back toes, and I might just hang out here for a second, see if I can breathe a little better before I go for the, the full standing. I'm tucking my toes, and I've got kind of a tripod of support here, so I'm going to mindfully push into the floor with all three points, and that's going to allow me to come fully back to standing. All right, so that's your process. The thing with, with inviting the body into a process is that you have to practice, right? And that doesn't need to be too dramatic. You don't have to practice for a long time. Let's say that every time you go to eat something and you would normally sit into a chair, it triggers something in your mind to say, actually, I'm going to do my sitting practice on the floor just once. I'm going to get down, I'm going to come back up, I'm going to eat my meal in my chair. Okay, so it's more about frequency than duration of practice. All right, so play with that and see how it feels. Give it some time. Remember to stay calm as you practice and not to struggle and strain because you really want to stay in the place of learning new coordination rather than stretching and striving. Let me know how that feels. Write some comments. Ask any questions about movements you'd like to see in the future explained. And I'll look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much.